Hit on. Hit on? I guess you feed on. Well, either. <laughs> what does that say about you as a person? Oh, interesting. Um, I don't know. I guess uh, I, I, I don't particularly like to be the center of attention. Like, you, you know, when you're like a, a, a more aggressive warrior class, you like to be, you know, front and center. I'm really that outgoing a person. I'm, I consider myself a little bit more shy. So I think the spellcasters, they, they can be dazzling because they can, you know, hit with a really big fireball or whatever, shadow ball. Do you see a lot of yourself in the character that you play on the guild? Um, yeah, I do. I mean, I'm not as, uh, as, I don't know, wimpy or, or as, uh, lacking in self-confidence as Codex is. I know that there are definitely aspects uh, that are a little bit biographical, you know, because I did have sort of a paralyzing addiction to, um, the game, but at the same time, I still, you know, cared about my, the people I played with in, in a real way, and that's why I wrote the guild, is because I wanted to show people that a lot of people have really nice support systems and friends over, you know, the internet or over gaming, you know, you know either. And uh, I just want to kind of show in a comedic way that those are just as legitimate relationships as um, any other are. I found it surprising that out of all your viewers, 40% of them were women. Is that surprising to you as well? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's a female lead character, and it's not like, you know, I'm the kind of girl who, who's very sexy. You know, I don't I don't leave with, with the sexy thing. So I think that, you know, that's a little bit more appealing to women versus a lot of the stuff on the internet is just, you know, about kind of, you know, more exploitative six-year girls or something like that so um, and then we have you know three girl gamer characters of really different you know uh, makeups one of the reasons I wrote all the characters as I did is that because I've you know on that game all my life and uh, I, I would see the stereotype of a gamer it's just like you know like a, a solid teenager in the basement eating hot wow. and I was like well this this is a stereotype that isn't really true anymore or might not have ever been true and for me, I wanted to kind of bust that. So the fact that I came up with three legitimate women characters who game, and I don't call attention to it, it just is. That's how the, the world is. Mm -hmm. And it, it makes me it makes me pretty proud. And I'm, I'm glad that women, you know, watch it and think that, hey, geek girls, you know, that's speaking my voice. What made you ultimately go with Microsoft to distribute your season two? Well, we had a lot of offers for the show, like ever since a year, you know, over a year ago, people wanted to um, distribute the show or own the show or, you know, buy the rights. And um, I, I really set out to kind of bust the idea that, you know, you, you have to sell the rights to your show to get it made. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to stand up for the artist and say that, hey, you, you came up with this idea, if you can possibly retain the rights to it and be able to exploit it in whatever medium you would like, mm -hmm. you know, why should you have a company who's not really used to doing web content you know, just just because of their name or whatever. Right. So, you know, I held out for over a year and I passed up a lot of deals that I thought you know, some people got, you know, would have been nervous to pass up. Yeah. But I just had to follow my heart and know that something would come along. The Xbox Live came to us and we're like, hey, we uh, we get the show, we really like it, we want to distribute it, and we don't necessarily need to own it. So is Xbox Live in the same position that cable was? 20 years ago? I think possibly. It's just like such a changing platform. I just feel like they're doing a lot of right things and, and they're certainly growing to a point where um, they're they're allowing people to port their media a lot of places and, and download it in the quality and in the ease and, and where they are. Like people who play Xbox are playing games a lot and then if they want content, it's right there rather than having to you know, change all your console settings and you know, function, function. I still get that wrong now. <laughs> So, people that don't have Xbox Live currently, are they still going to be able to watch season one online? Yes, that was the re one of the reasons why we, we, we partnered with Microsoft, was that they would distribute not only on Xbox Live, but on MSN Video and Zoom Marketplace. And season one is still available on YouTube, and we also have a really nice redesigned website with season one in the center player of our web website at watchthegill.com. And then season two episodes will be rolling out there. Um, four weeks after they premiere on live and on MSN video. So the goal was to always make the show free and available to all the fans. So besides the obvious season two, what do you have coming up for 2009? Anything in the works? You know, I'm always working. I love working in both, you know, old media and new media. I just want to be that person who helps, you know, show people that uh, what content is legitimate and can be just as artistic and, you know, popular as mainstream. I mean, we're not, you know, quite there yet as far as like our legitimacy, but hopefully.
hopefully, you know, everything I do helps somebody else do it better than I have, and, uh, and we'll reach a point where we're all just, you know, making our stuff, making our, telling our stories.